Space has always held a special place in the hearts of so many LEGO fans. So what better way to celebrate our passion for space builds than with a real life LEGO designer who has worked on some of these incredible sets. Give it up for George, everybody. Hello. George, thank you so much for being no here. No problem. I love your wardrobe, by the way. It in matches the space, theme. Yeah. And first of all, Thank you for being here. You have a dream job. It seems so cool. We have so many awesome space sets out here right now. Let's just dive in. Tell me about this first one. So what we got right here is the brand new NASA Space Shuttle Discovery, which we've created and launched this April to celebrate 40 years of the Space Shuttle program. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. And do you guys have any extra special features for super space fans? Oh yes. This is the biggest version of this we've ever created, which meant we've, meant we've managed to put in all of the features you'd expect. We've got the landing gear that retract to the back. Ooh. We've got the bay doors that can open up and even tiny details like the little cameras inside the bay so the astronauts can see what's going on. That's so incredible. One of my favorite things about Lego sets is it's not just what you see on the outside. There's always so many fun details on the inside. And when I was walking over here, I noticed this one's the ISS, right? That's International correct, Space yeah. So tell me about that. So this one's come about because of the Lego Ideas program where fans can submit an idea for a Lego product, and if it achieves 10,000 votes, it has the opportunity to become a real Lego product. That is so incredible, and I know we're gonna be talking a bit about Lego ideas later, but I think it's so cool how fans can you know, vote and get their own ideas into real Lego products. That's so amazing. So I wanna talk a bit more about your process for creating these amazing, amazing sets, because when you create something imaginary for one of um, the fictional properties, let's say, that's one thing but these are based on real life spaceships. Yeah. How does that work? So what was super special with the ISS doing this is that we got to get the reference from all of the different space agencies that helped create it. And we spoke to the real life engineers who assembled the ISS in space. And then we've translated that experience into building the ISS physically out of bricks. The commitment to attention to detail is so incredible. And I wanna ask you some questions about this one too because this one seems to be the most complex build out of all the ones we have here. So this is the City Deep Space Rocket. And whilst the Space Shuttle and the ISS are based on older space icons, this is at the cutting edge of space travel because it's based on the Artemis rocket that's gonna be launching at the end of this year. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And. I heard there's an extra special feature for it, yeah? There is, yes. If we can bring in the app. Oh, extra this, demonstration. This model is app enabled, <laughs> and we love to integrate technology into LEGO products when we think it can uh, emphasize the physical play experience. Oh, wow. So what we've got right here is the app creates the, the screen that the astronauts can look at. It's got a radar dish and everything, and we can simulate the launch of the rocket. It's counting down now. Four, three, three. Two, one. one! And the rocket takes off. Oh my God, that's incredible. Oh yeah. That is amazing. I love that you guys integrate and update the, the products so often to make them really relevant to today. So on sets like these, do you get to work with NASA to make sure they're as true to the real world as possible? Absolutely. The Lego Group and NASA have collaborated for over 10 years now. We work closely with them to ensure that we get all of the details correct. Something like the ISS, uh, that's developed over a few years. And the Space Shuttle is an icon that we keep coming back to year after year. And by working closely with them, we can make sure that something like the Space Shuttle Discovery can be accurate to a specific year or mission. This one's the STS-31, for example. And it means that every single detail, right down to the tiniest things, like where each individual astronaut sat on the mission, is correct. That's amazing. So if a real life astronaut were to look at this, they would recognize all the, the pieces That's of it, correct, right? That's correct, yeah. Well, I think it's only right that we do bring in a space professional. So joining us live via satellite, how appropriate, please welcome former NASA astronaut, Mike Massimino. Welcome, Mike. I can't believe someone as busy as you has time for us today. Thank you so much for joining and for being a part of this. So I'm personally a huge fan of big adrenaline packed challenges. So I was pretty jealous when I saw that you got to build a real Lego lunar lander in zero gravity. What was that like? Oh, it's pretty awesome. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Thanks for having me and thanks for the your designer there. Thank you so much for making these great products. 
that uh, we can learn about space with, even if we're former astronauts, brings back a lot of memories. Doing that zero gravity uh, lunar lander project was two years ago, and I love playing, uh, working and building Legos on Earth and with my kids and with my friends, but there's nothing like doing it in zero gravity. It makes it a little bit more challenging, but a whole heck of a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. Well, I think we all want to see it, yeah? Let's see it. So let's see a recap. with gravity, I already have trouble keeping track of all of my Lego pieces. So um, that was pretty incredible. So earlier we were talking about the Artemis mission. And Mike, obviously you're someone who's super knowledgeable on that subject. But before we get into the details, let's check out a sneak peek. 50 years ago, NASA went to the moon. They called it Apollo. What many people don't know is that Apollo had a twin. She was a woman named Artemis, goddess of the moon. They are returning to the moon as a new generation of explorers, this time to stay and to prepare to achieve humanity's next giant leap of sending the first human mission to Mars. I mean, wow. Well, Mike, give us the headlines. What is the Artemis program? It's uh, pretty exciting stuff, Michelle. Uh, it's the, NASA's next big project uh, to bring people back to the moon, but this time to stay and explore more than we did 50 years ago, and then use that as a precursor to learn about what it's like to be on the moon and uh, operate in, in that environment to go eventually to Mars. So it's not just about going to the moon, it's about eventually getting to Mars. That is incredible. And a, a question I think we're all wondering is, where are the astronauts going to live while they're there? Yeah, it's kind of interesting the way they planned it out. They're uh, going to be building a, what they call the Lunar Gateway. So it's going to be uh, something like a habitat uh, experimental module space station, but it's going to be in orbit around the moon. So it's going to be a place that you can launch from Earth to go to, and you would stay on that gateway for a while and then go down to the moon for different expeditions, different missions on the moon, and then come back to the gateway before you went back home to, to Earth. So they're gonna be living uh, for a lot of it on the moon, but they're always gonna be on the gateway. It's gonna be available for astronauts to do research and to learn and to use it as kind of a place to go in between Earth and moon. That is incredible. And are there any other ways this mission will make history? Yeah, well, we haven't been back to the moon for we haven't been to the moon for 50 years, and those are just short visits. We're going to be settling there, but uh, the the other historical part of this is when they did this 50 years ago, it was all uh, uh, mainly military test pilots, one geologist that went, but they were all men that went back then. The space program has changed an awful lot, and I think a lot of that has to do with Lego because it's gotten both young boys and girls interested in in engineering and science. And what we see as a result of that, the last astronaut class, for example, was half, half men, half women. So the, what, what Artemis will do is not only get us back to the moon, but get the first woman to the moon and the first people of color to the moon. So I, I think that is also very historical, because if we're going to accomplish all these great things in space, we need everyone to participate. That's so incredible. I, that, I'm so, so excited for this. And what will the crew do when they get there? Uh, they're going to be uh, busy and uh, I think having a great time, of course. Uh, but what they'll be doing is experiments in the uh, in the gateway module. They'll be able to study the moon, also have some zero gravity experiments to do. But they're also going to be learning how to live on a planetary surface for long periods of time. The space station has given us a lot of time. We have 21 years we've been have, have astronauts on the space station that we switch in and out from time to time. But we've learned how to live for long periods of time in zero gravity. That's different than being on a planetary surface and dealing with a little bit of gravity, dealing with rocks and dust and things like that, uh, that we're going to have to deal with when we go to Mars. So they're going to be learning about the moon. They're going to be learning about experiments around the moon. But they're also going to be learning how to get people to Mars and be able to live there as well. 
That is incredible. Oh my gosh. Well, as far as show openings go, I think this one was pretty out of this world. Let's say a huge thank you to our guests for joining. Everyone give it up for Mike and George.